feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Oh, you took my name? Tell me what I make all you. I'm gonna be snail. I said snail, not kaka. <laughs> what? <laughs> I see. Kaka, is it? Okay. What? What? <laughs> I'm gonna be kaka. Yeah, I'm gonna be kaka. Yeah. I mean, I guess I said snail, but you call me kaka, so... I'm gonna be kaka. Oh, and maybe it's sick for my Steam name. <laughs> Oh, how rude of me. Please pardon my mistake. I was sure that's what you said, but it seems I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You wish to be called Snill. Oh, I kind of want to be called Kaka now. Yeah, be Snill. I see. Very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. Alright. Now that we've been properly introduced, let's begin our story. Presented by Snill. Um, <clears throat> From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization, civilization evolved, it has been a constant presence that none have ever escaped. Whether it is one's own or that of someone close, that is always a difficult thing to accept. This is an immutable reality, a value shared by all, no matter the age in which they live. In fact, oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain, ghosts, spirits, and so on. Similarly, in attempts to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born from burning spirit incense to summoning the souls of the dead. Some of those secret arts are still being passed down to this day. Ah, on that note, now, this may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? Uh, what if... What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead? Yes, if you had the power to bring someone back to life, one time and one time only, what would you do, Snow? <sighs> Don't hurt <laughs> my heart. I use it... Let's see. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if I, if, I'd use it if it came at no cost. I wouldn't want it. Let someone else have it. I mean, it's like it's kind of like Pandora's box, right? There's always a catch. I think I wouldn't want it. I'd let someone else have it because oh, what's coming back might not be who they are anymore, just their body or something. Like a cemetery or some shit. I'm dumb. I ain't fucking dumb. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes, that is what I thought you would say. Hmm. What seems to be the matter? Uh, you want to know what this box that has been sitting here is? It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a color television. The world I will be sending you to is full of devices such as this that do not exist in the age you are found. In this era, a color television can be found in nearly every household. That is not all. For example, if a person should wish to contact someone while they are out of their home, they use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? I'd be thrilled to have you continue the story, Snow. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I've kept you waiting for long enough. I present to you, Paranormal Sight, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rite of Resurrection. A peculiar yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives as it unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the Rite of Resurrection. Those who have lost someone dear to them will feel particularly strongly about it, clinging to it as their last attempt. The first I shall introduce is a man named Shogo Okami, as one of them. There's some more interest in it. Shogo Oki, male office clerk. Shogo is an unremarkable young man 
entering this third year of working in the planning department of Hidehaku, so it's a chemical company headquartered in Sumida. Born in Western Tokyo to an ordinary family around the same time as the birth of Color TV, he grew up amidst the boom of special effects, heavy action films, anime, variety shows, professional baseball, and pop music. Trevor graduated from a famous private university in Tokyo and has since settled into a apolitical mindset, common among those of his generation. With no strong ideals and no particular dissatisfaction with the world as it develops around him, he is content to just go with the flow, having stumbled into current position of pure chance. And it is safe to assume he will follow the stereotypical path of working his way up the ladder, starting a family and remaining the same company until retirement. He plays folk guitar as a hobby and is currently looking for a girlfriend. news. Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Early this morning, the body of a drowned oh god, did he die? Drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumida City. <sighs> Police have identified the body as Shogo Oki, a 25-year-old man who worked at a company in the area. Huh? As signs of a struggle were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Please pay no mind to what you have just seen. In this, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time back a smidge and start again from there. You understand? You saw nothing. You know nothing. I mean, you're right. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. Here we go! I'm so excited. Shogo? Shogo, are you alright? Wakey wakey. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth to Shoko, Oki. What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now, up with you, up! Oh, I can move it around. Yeah, my face. <laughs> uh, okay, and... There. How's that, all right? Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? I'm fine, I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. <laughs> Office worker Shokooki. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit to see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, drag the screen or move the right stick to look around. Try looking around your surroundings now. I already figured that out, beat. Oh, I'm an owl. I'm an owl. How many times could I turn my- Ah! <laughs> you bitch! Ah! <laughs> good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. <laughs> Do you remember anything like where we are or what we were doing? Um. Oh no, you look so confused. You're messing with me, right? Stop it. You're scaring me. All right, let's just calm down. Take a good look around you, okay? You gonna do it again? Look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Oh. What is that? Recall. Is she gonna do the thing again? Let me see. Better not. Mm-hmm. That's right. Playground. 
I want to see what the call is. I'm still a little busy. What the hell is wrong with me? Wait, where am I? I should take a look around. Okay, I'll look at the playground. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. Hmm, where are we? Alright, oh, this is Sumida City, Tokyo. We're at Kinshibori Park near Kinshicho Station. Yoko brought me here saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That explains why there's nobody else around. <coughs> Sumida City, Tokyo. It's a big city. One of the 23 districts of Tokyo, located in the eastern part of the city. It is surrounded by the Sumida Arakawa and Kyunaka rivers. At the start of the Showa era, the area was still divided into two districts, the southern Honjo and northern Mukojima, but they were merged into one district after the Second World War. It is said to be named after the Sumida River and the banks that line it. Unlike the river, however, its name uses the character for ink rather than that for corner. Even now, people still frequently mix up the two. Despite suffering extensive damage from both the Great Kanto earthquake and air bombings during the war, Sumida managed to recover and come out on top every time. Once filled with, sum samurai, res Once filled with samurai residences, it is now home to a thriving industrial district, and many residential zones through evidence of its previous character can still be found all around the area. Major landmarks, tourist attractions, Eco Temple, Former Yasuda Gardens, site of Kira Hozukensuke's residence, Hanjo Matsura, oh damn these words are hard, Matsuzakacho Park, Sumida Park, Tokyo Metropolitan Memorial Hall, Mukujima Hyakin Gardens. Oh, I want to go to the gardens. I hope they let me. In Shibori Park. Ooh, pretty. In the daytime. Open 1950. Conveniently close to Kinsichu Station and surrounded on all sides by roads, this paved park is a popular spot for people to meet or relax. Kinshibori Park was named after the Kinshibori Canal, part of the South Waragesu Canal which could once be found nearby. In fact, the area's name Kinsichu Kinshicho, was also derived from the canal. Hmm. Okay, I already read that. Oh, okay. New all culture. Any categories? Okay, I get it. What does that do? Oh, okay, yeah, I actually click out of it. Check surroundings. Okay, I checked that. Yeah, you do this. Can I check the trees? What's this? I want to look at the trash. It could be something important in the trash. Be something of mine. Can I look up, maybe? Sky? Pick the weather? No? It's windy here. It's so windy, so quiet. Surely that's a thing, yeah. Let's see. Telephone booth. <laughs> These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. <laughs> telephone booth. A small booth containing a public telephone, most often found in parks or along roads. Local telephone calls can be placed at a rate of 10 yen per 3 minutes. Um, more, recent, more recently, telephone booths capable of accepting prepaid cards known as telephone cards have begun to spread enabling one to make a phone call without the need for small change. The telephone booths in the downtown area tend to be plastered with unauthorized advertisements and leaflets, a problem that has shown no sign of slowing. Like a bulletin board. What else is there? Is that it? Might be something behind your big fucking head. I could look at. I guess I'll talk to. Oh, I forgot her name already. Yoko! 
Yikes, that was close. If we died before we got our hands on the Rite of Resurrection, everything would be over before it started. Oh. Still a little woozy. What the hell is wrong with me? There's a girl here. Um, who is she? Yoko? Yeah, I could like talk about her. That's Yoko Fukunaga. Good, at least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. So she drugged me into some bullshit. If I think harder, I can probably recall a little more about what's going on. We've only met a few times, but we've really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. I have no idea how she feels, though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. But I know I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. Paranormal fanatic, Yoko Fukunaga. Persons of interest updated. Female housekeeper. After this is the kind of bitch who you you hire as a maid and she like fucking accidentally bonds a ghost in your house and shit and now you're haunted forever. After obtaining a junior college degree, Yoko started working as a housekeeper. Due to her ability to see things others, other cannot, things other cannot. She has received strange looks from a young age. This ability spurred an interest in the paranormal, which she continues to pursue to this day. Following graduation, Yoko worked a desk job at a trading company, but butted heads with her supervisor, who was skeptical of the supernatural and quite quit within a year. So she's like talking to everybody, even at work, about the supernatural. Of course, it's not gonna hit right. Now, while working as a housekeeper, she spends her days devouring mystery magazines and visiting haunted spots. As she vowed to live life true to herself and never change for the sake of others, Yuko has no regrets about the path she has taken. Yuko has a dog, a Shiba Inu named Okopogo. That's so cute, who has been by her side since she was a student. This bitch is gonna get that dog killed. <laughs> Now what? Make another rounds. Should I have recalled at everything? Recall at the, the that. Let me think. What can I remember? Okay, her name is Yoko Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? Memory time. Flashbacks. It was around noon on one of my days off. I had just finished running some errands in Kinshichu and was here taking a quick break. I was just looking around absentmindedly. There's some people over there. I could look around absentmindedly. Oh, when I noticed this girl loitering about. She was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself talking to the animals. Searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly, this is the location of the Whispering Canal. The what? Now I've done it. I bet you think I'm some kind of lunatic. The seven mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it. I guess not. Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumida is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into 
two separate cities. The north part was Mukojima and the south part was Honjo. Ah, uh, am I boring you? Well, I'm not a local or anything. I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, the seven mysteries of Honjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really? Is that old? That's like over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the occult craze. <laughs> I don't blame you. A lot of the popular stories going around are pretty fishy. But the seven mysteries of Honjo are different because they're all true. True? That's what I said. They're the real deal. After all I've done, I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yoko Fukunaga. Anjo. Holy shit, can I zoom in? That's a big fucking city. wonder where's the park I'm on right now. Probably like right here or something. A location in the southern part of modern Sumida City. It considered... It consisted mostly of swamplands until the middle of the Edo period. While it wasn't originally considered part of the city of Edo itself, the area on the eastern side of the Sumida River began to be developed once the Ryogoku Bridge was built, after the Great Fire of Miyareki. While Hanjo is known for its large number of rivers and canals, many of these were dug during the area's urbanization for drainage and sewage. The Ryogoku Bridge area, home to the Iko Temple, eventually became filled with both people and shops. After a magistrate was assigned to the area and shops continued to pop up, it soon became a part of Edo proper as its reputation as a lively place spread. Hanjo, along with other areas like Asakusa and Fukukawa, are still appreciated today for their old-fashioned feel and architecture. Hmm. Anjo became known as a hotspot for strange happenings during the Edo period. A number of these stories have survived to this day and become known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. While many of these were likely the result of people blaming things they didn't understand on spirits or monsters, the stories continue to be told as urban legends. Despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than ten of these strange tales. Their roots likely come from stories told by the city's common folk. The most famous of the stories the Whispering Canal, which eventually became the basis for both an idiom and a well-known Rakugo story. The most famous of the seven mysteries, the Whispering Canal. He's throwing it back, that ghost. The Fool's Procession. The Beckoning Light. The Haunting Clappers. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Evergreen Beach. The Taiko Sugara, Sagaru. The foot washing mansion, the one sided reed, the ever burning lantern. The kitty. She could really like zoom up on these pictures. The seven mysteries of Hanjo. There it goes, are real paintings. The whispering canal. Oh, yeah. An enduring superstition, formerly known as Kinshibori, many fishermen once gathered on this section of the canal that ran through Hanjo. As their days came to, the, to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal, whispering, Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into the canal never to return. The strange phenomenon continued to occur, and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. Damn. They got their fish ganked with the ghost. Oh, craze. Paranormal phenomena. The supernatural aliens, cryptids, lost civilizations, ESP, the list goes on. Such unexplainable phenomena are quick to take on a life of their own. Pleso Plesiosaur named Nessie living in Loch Ness. Sightings of mythical creatures like the Tsuchinoko or Hibagon 
the urban legend of the Uchisaki Ona, television reports of spoon bending psychics, documentaries documentaries which feature mediums and spirit photography. These are only a few examples of stories that have captivated the public. There is no end to this obsession in sight, with magazines on paranormal phenomenon enjoying widespread publication. Most recently, rumors of an ancient ritual known as the Rite of Resurrection has been spreading in certain circles. We exchanged contact information, and we've talked on the phone a few times since. We've even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the seven mysteries of Hanjo again. I figured she'd gotten bored of it. Nessa's. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Huh, wait a second. Where did Yoko go? She just ditched me. I fucking got a concussion and she ditches me. That's right, she asked me to come here to help her look for one of the seven mysteries. Actually, I think I did some research into the seven mysteries of Hanjo. I can't remember all too well. I should check my files. Research? The Fool's Procession. I did a fucking lot of research, goddamn. Enduring Superstition. A mysterious... A mysterious tale rega regaling an encounter had by a daimyo at his residence in Hanjo's Ushijima, now Komagata High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music, much like that of a Kagura performance. He commanded his people to find the source. No matter how much they searched, the music would fade when no when one neared the Warikesu Canal. The source of the sound was never located. The story is also known as the procession of the Tanuki, as many were of the belief that it must have been these mischievous tricksters behind it all. Hmm. Okay, on the next episode, I'll read the rest of them.